The next two speakers uh, are come from my, my first public service employer in Ireland, Dublin City Council. Um, we've got uh, Veronita Marie T. Sosoke and uh, Jamie Codden, who are going to speak to us about the um, accelerating the use of drones for local government. And innovation is, is not only about tackling the risk um, that is already there, but um, to, to, to allow us to harness a new emerging technology. And I think that project is a great example of how to do that. It's going to come up now, but wonderful to be here in Kilkenny Castle. What a beautiful venue. Yeah, I just I love watching drone footage, so we'll just look at this for about five minutes. <laughs> but this is beautiful footage around Docklands, but what excites me about drones is just things you can do that you know, aren't possible without the technology. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing with drones and how we're trying to accelerate their potential. And really what I do in Dublin City Council is look at new emerging technologies and how we can apply them to deliver better services and also better outcomes for our citizens. And drones is just one of these technologies that's really starting to, excuse the pun, take off, lift off, whatever you want to want to say. But it's really about future-proofing the city. I think what we're seeing with digital is that, you know, the adoption of digital that used to take decades is now happening in years, is happening in months. And, you know, there's a real, I suppose, dichotomy between, you know, what's happening within public sector and then what's happening in the world outside and how fast it's moving. And, and really, there's a lot that we can do in terms of grabbing these uh, opportunities. And you're probably wondering why I'm showing pictures of scooters and bikes, but you know, over the last number of years, you put a bit of tech, a GPS, an app, and creates a whole new service that we never thought was possible. And just, if you look at this slide here, 2017, you didn't have electric scooters in the US. In one year, you had 35 million trips. The next year, you had 50 million trips. And now you've got electric scooters and bikes in thousands of cities around the world, multi-billion euro industries, and a big tension between how you roll these out in cities, because they just landed on our streets. So, you know, this is the same that's going to happen with drones, and we just need to think about how we get ahead of the curve. Click the next one here. So here's a lovely image here, not something I was just scribbling last night. What do you think that image represents? Any ideas? It's a place North Dublin, Balbriggan. Who knows Balbriggan? Yeah? You'll know. What do you think? Drone. Drone deliveries. Yeah, drone deliveries over a week in Balbriggan, a couple of weeks ago from a company called Manadrone. And if you look on the left here, it's delivering takeaway, groceries. This is happening on our doorstep. One of the most innovative companies in the world, you know, building out one of the biggest global businesses potentially uh, on the back of you know, North Dublin. Uh, and it's just, it's just amazing to think what's happening here. But the, you know, on the right here, they've done 100,000 early flights uh, to date. Uh, they're employing lots of people. In Ireland, Wing, which is backed by Alphabet, which is Google, just announced that they're using Dublin as another test bed, Lusk, um, to, to really grow this type of business. So this is happening on our doorstep. The future is happening in our cities, in our towns. All these new technologies are coming to a town or a village or a city near us. So what are we doing about it? So that's what the project is about, accelerating the potential of drones. It's about thinking about how we're going to grab that opportunity, but also working with a whole range of stakeholders. So if you think about what's happening at a European level. Europe is one of the leaders in terms of drones, in terms of regulation and governance, and you have the European uh, Aviation Safety Agency absolutely trailblazing. And you can see some of the timelines there. We have lots of new regulation. Veronica will talk about that. And we need to figure that out and make sure that we're doing things right and doing it the right way. For the second age, 2025, we're moving towards beyond line of sight. You even have these things called taxi drones. They're gonna be rolled out in cities like Paris over the next couple of years and then you're going to have mass adoption of drones. So this is happening now. What does it mean for a city like Dublin? Thousands of drone flights a day, even an hour uh, above our airspace. And really, what does it mean for local government? Well, we're, we're at the heart of this. You know, this is, this is our urban public realm. What's going to happen just above the sky above us? But also, think about the services that we're delivering uh, using drones. I mean, I think it's in Dublin City Council. We have over 40 people across 14 different services either using drones or looking to use drones across a whole range of areas. So there's going to be competition between public use of drones for emergency, life-saving, uh, for the services that we deliver, and then private sector, whether it's delivering burritos, logistics. So we're going to have to get that balance right. Um, and look at some of the headlines there. You know, you've got all the really good stuff. You know, it's about you know, how we use it for environmental monitoring and emergency response, but all the negatives there, you know, delivering drugs into prisons, um, privacy. You know, people get a bit freaked out. And even with the war in Ukraine, how drones are being used is kind of terrifying, I guess, in one sense. 
So I'm going to hand over to Veronica. So we set up a project to look at this, to bring everyone together and look at how we can set a bit of structure and shape. So go, Veronica. Yeah, so I hope the mic is going to work. Uh, but yeah, pretty much. So what we did was, OK, let's look at this piece of technology. And what happened was in Dublin City Council, we got 45 different staff across 14 different sections. And they were like, OK, I see this piece of technology. It sounds interesting. It looks like it's going to help me or it's going to disrupt me. So we just brought everyone together and we proposed this project uh, that was pretty much to look at compliance. It's looking at health and safety, how to make it operations like in a good way, and also how we build trust with our like population. How can we actually use this piece of technology to take some opportunities and to make sure that we're doing right? Can you just? Sorry, just gonna get the click. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Basically, what we did is we just put together uh, four work packages, uh, being one and two, really looking at upskilling staff, how we can produce some like handbooks and reports that could help uh, our staff and, and our people, and also looking at a little bit of the trust, so what the population is thinking about this technology. And then the work package three and four, it's more looking at knowledge sharing, it's looking at how we can build a network, because I think everyone here that I presented is at Collaboration Ski, and so work package three and four, it's kind of like looking at that. But I'm gonna present very briefly, because I could do 15 minutes or even more in each of those work packets, but it's very, very quick overview, and all those outputs, they are available online. You can just download, and it's free. So the first one was an international best practice report. So that one was a huge research to see what's happening where, uh, what are the good things, what are the bad things, any good recommendations, and which is also an assessment of the Irish market, so how Ireland is positioned itself. As you can see, it's very complex. Uh, the drone ecosystem is just growing and growing, so we need to include everyone. So we have the customers, we have the drone service, we have to be thinking about the governance, how it's gonna be our traffic system, that's called UTM for drones. Uh, we were also looking at the regulatory environment, and then for building those new legislations, we also need to be like measuring benefits and impacts. So if I just show a video. What I'm seeing is an interaction between the private sector, the public sector, central government, local government, and they're looking at how drones can improve our daily life and how we need to regulate them so that the system can all work for the benefit of the public. You need the people who develop drone platforms and uh, develop the uh, sensor technologies, develop the services that come with uh, drones. We need the right regulations and we need the public and we need local authorities to work together to prioritise those services which make most sense and do the best public good. And I think in Ireland, this is probably one of the best places in the world to get that rolling effect. So I think it's really, really inspiring to get summarized in one minute video what we are actually talking about, but I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, so the second work package that we did was really looking at compliance, and one of the key issues and barriers that we heard was actually privacy. They were like, okay, I don't even know if I can use a drone, what do I need to do, what do I need to put in place? So we just built a handbook focusing on drones, and just like very briefly explaining what it's about, we put a little bit of a structure of like three steps uh, that we need to be thinking about. So data acquisition, analysis, and actions. And then just a little bit of like four steps, just asking questions, what you have to do, what you have to be thinking in mind, and then making decisions. So really, really like easy and very nice way of navigating that. And during the process, we engaged with a lot of range of stakeholders and we identified 50 different use cases just for local government service. So that's pretty like impactful. So the second one was really a public sentiment survey. And that one was really trying to measure uh, what people think about uh, in Ireland. We wanted to see what's the context for us. And as you can see, it was 900 responses. So it was huge uh, kind of like survey across the whole Ireland and different age groups as well. 
So it's very representative and it's very powerful to see that 84% of the people, they were very positive. They think it's a good idea, they think it's a nice piece of technology, but we need to work a little bit with the awareness, only like 50%, and most of the people that were using it as a hobby. And then the concerns, as you can see, is like privacy is on the top, 75%, followed by security and safety concerns. But I also wanted to bring here that by 2025, there was some expectations, and people are really like, almost in the 6%, saying, I think 2025, I'm gonna have delivery. So we really need to be preparing our cities. And even the air taxi that Jamie mentioned, we have like 18% that believe that maybe we're gonna have this kind of service. So it puts a little bit of like a pressure and momentum for us to be thinking and doing this right. So the other part of the survey was actually focused on public service, because okay, nice private service, but what really matters for us is how we're gonna prioritize public service. Do we need to do a little bit of more work of awareness? And so we just ask the questions. So the first one is emergency service. So that's really looking like drones for white fires or maybe like some accidents. And then the second one, it's really looking at the planning. So on the planning one, you can use drones to identify uh, trees to do like footprints of the buildings, build 3D models. Uh, on the third one, it's environmental monitoring. So you can use drones to identify invasive species or you could be looking at water pollution in our rivers. So it's a very interesting one. The next one, it's very similar. It's for like waste management and enforcement. So you could be doing a little bit of identification of illegal dumping across the cities. Uh, on the last one, it's, we have traffic management. So we could be like popping up drones anywhere in the country and just like identifying traffic counts instead of like putting someone there. Uh, or you could just do like traffic composition as well. And then the last is the policing. So how we could use also for a little bit of enforcement or accidents. So you could like scan some like crime scene or something. And as you can see, it's really, really high. The positive feeling it's on over 80% uh, for like the policing, but all the other ones, they are like 90% or plus. So I think we need to build on the top of that, how we are gonna build trust, how we are gonna keep telling them like we are complying with the privacy, with the safety and the security. So we really believe if we keep doing this kind of engagements and educating people, we have a huge opportunity to use drones for our own service. So the last handbook that we produced was looking at regulations and operations. Uh, and that one, it's very important because legislation, it's coming up. Uh, at the start of the year, we just had new European legislation that was disrupting a little bit of the sector. And we also are reviewing the whole like Irish legislation at the moment. So I think that's very important. And I would like to mention the big ones uh, of institutions you have to look up. It's the IASA, that's the European level, and then the IEA, that's our aviation authority in Ireland. And then that one, it's a very good handbook for people that are were using drones so they can get up to speed with the new changes, but it's also very briefly explaining what you have to do if you want to start operating a drone. And then just to wrap up and send back to Jamie in the next slide, I just want to show a little bit of the events and the knowledge sharing. So it is a huge drone uh, event in the Woodkey venue just on summer this year and was like really sharing all this knowledge. Uh, we also brought together the whole sector of public service to showcase how we are using across the like Ireland. And we also had a little bit of a drone demo demonstration. One of them was a drone tethered. So it's linked with a cable and that was like the first flight in Ireland uh, that we had. So it's pretty like powerful. And just to mention that we also got shortlisted for this project for an innovation award in the biggest uh, smart city uh, expo. So hopefully we're gonna win, but we are only discovering this next month. I'm gonna hand back to Jamie. That's great, Veronica. Thanks very much. So just the last uh, to summarize, just you know, really there's a lot to think about here from local government. We're absolutely gonna play a key role in this, not just in terms of the future, but also now the services that we need to prioritize. I think a sectoral approach is gonna be really important. We need to think about, well, this was a lovely project, but how do we manage this as a sector? Uh, because I don't think we can do it alone, and that's going to be really, really critical. And the other thing is that, you know, what type of services, you know, do we do in-house? What services do we maybe 
get as, as, a, as an outsourced service or something like that. So it's really, really important conversations to have. And I think also what's re what, with the expertise with global people, top of their game globally, just saying, well, there is actually not a drone industry without citizen buy-in. If people hate this and think it's untrustworthy and you know, they, don't, they don't feel like there's someone looking after it and that's going to, you know, thinking about the benefits to the public, I think we're not going to win and you know, we'll lose lots of opportunities. There's a massive economic opportunity, multi-billion uh, industry. And then just last, this was the most amazing collaboration of any project I've worked on. The Irish Aviation Authority were brilliant. The, I suppose deeper, you know, great uh, street cred to you guys for kind of helping to fund it and bring, helping us bring everyone together. Eddie as well, LGMA, and it was so many partners, uh, public, private, academia. It was absolutely fantastic project. And all the assets, resources, everything's available. And you know, I think it's a testament to the project that we're shortlisted for a kind of a, a governance war award in terms of new and emerging technology at the Global Smart City Expo in Barcelona. So yeah, great stuff. And thanks very much for all your support. Wonderful to be here today. Lots to think about. Okay. Want to go in there? Yeah. We've had a lot of different events over the last few years. That one in particular, what was really interesting is the organization had made a fundamental mistake, I feel, in their handling. I think they should have come out to the sector day one. And I think we've encouraged them that they're not going to have, they're not going to be murdered alive by the sector if they come out. And I think they had a very positive experience at the ISAC. But the big, biggest thing is that, um, if we're all using, if, if 19 out of 31 were using this service and if public confidence was damaged for the service in one local authority, that's contagious. And all 19 of us, even those that were not impacted, had to take this seriously because A, we had to defend our actions in taking, maintaining the service. Why have you kept it there? Um, and B, we all had to, partic to participate in the mitigating recovery. When you have an incident like that, you're obliged to uh, understand what happened and how do you stop it happening again. And that often takes the case, in this case, it took uh, the form of a configuration both at the organisation side and at each of the 19, we, each of us had to spend half a day reconfiguring particular firewalls to make sure we were now robust and it couldn't happen to the rest, the 12 that hadn't been impacted. So I think the learning was for, I think the organisation learnt that if they engaged with us at the outset, but if you're using a service and it's been compromised, you are a, gay, you are, you're a stakeholder in that. You need to be in the conversation because you will have to take the mitigating action to prevent it happening to you. And you may have to defend it publicly and you may have to maintain the confidence of the public on social media platforms. Thanks, Thanks very much. Uh, um, just, just to say, folks, a lot of very positive comments in about all the, uh, the, the projects presented, so well done to everyone. Uh, one of the questions came in in relation to the drone project, uh, Jamie and, and, and Veronica, just the impact of the new legislation, if you like, and the new controls by the uh, Irish Aviation Authority and how much that will potentially impact the use of drones um, in the sector, in general, but in the sector especially. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'll, will I cover it? Sorry, yeah. So I think um, it's, it's probably put a bit of a dent in terms of the momentum on drones, but all for the right reasons. And I think it raises a lot of questions in terms of how much you do yourself internally. And I think this kind of haphazard kind of ad hoc approach, while it was something you could do previously with the new regulation, it's just not possible. There's too much paperwork and there's too much risk in terms of not doing a property. So I think it gets us thinking about how maybe we need to move beyond local authority by local authority to a sectoral approach and then also think about what do we do well in-house versus you know, what are the type of services that we might rely on other frameworks uh, to deliver. So it's, uh, it's certainly, it's gonna be really strong for the future, um, but we're, you know, there's some teething problems and some challenges at the moment, but the, the handbooks and stuff that we delivered, the training has really helped that and we've helped a couple of local authorities get some the accreditation. I don't, I don't know, Veronica, if you wanted to add anything else there? Yeah, it's just, I think it's more like how to put all those procedures in place and it's all for the right reasons, but it's just like thinking how you do that in a more like safe and operational way and scalable way. But it posed a little bit of like the challenge that before when it was ad hoc was a little bit less structured. 
Uh, but it's, yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, and I think the handbooks really help because there is loads of questions, especially because it changes at the European level. Uh, but it's just trying to explain what are the changes and what's the impacts for each stakeholder. Mm -hmm. right, I suppose we have a question for Alan as well, just in regards to the role of culture in changing the view of the data. I suppose if you didn't have the um, event in Limerick, how easy do you think you would have got the buy-in to, I suppose, be able to change the approach? Maybe um, I'm optimistic in nature, and I, I feel I felt like I would have a, a high level of confidence that I would have um, been able to harness that uh, culture shift. But for sure, I think it would have taken me a lot longer. Um, you know, there's I, I used to come from a highly organised. Uh, private sector company with processes for everything um, and, and enough people to do all of those things. Within local authority, it's less people for more functions. And so everybody puts their shoulder to the wheel to get, to get everything done to an incredibly high standard. It's, it's so impressive how local authorities operate. Um, but a lot of people don't have the, have the time to take their head up out of the weeds to, to think, how could we do things differently? My very nature is to, to think, how can I do something differently tomorrow than how I did it today? I don't want to challenge the status quo just for the sake of challenging the status quo, but there's always a better way to do things. And I see the, the technology as, and digital solutions as one way to, to address all of that, to address some of the issues Ruth talked about, to address many of the issues Jamie and Veronica talked about. Um, but we need people. Uh, and I've, cert I've, I've been part of some projects that... Um, failed because uh, it, it, not within a local authority but in a previous life um, failed in an extremely big way financially because people were not brought on that journey. So I, I, one, once I recognized um, the acute change in culture, uh, I went to pounce on that and, and leverage it uh, to the nth degree. So that's, that's still a journey and as I said, it's a multi-year uh, body of work that we'll, we'll um, uh, implement. Well, thank you very much uh, to, to all our speakers. Um, I think you, you have a break now. Eddie is going to give you the logistic. But just to say thank you again uh, for giving um, me the opportunity to be here and, um, and do uh, take part uh, other event in Innovation Week uh, this week. I encourage you to look at the full schedule. And best of luck with the rest of your day. And thank you. Thank you.